Hi viewers, I thought I'd do this quick video for you on three of the metals that people might choose to put their savings into and uh, my thoughts on those. Now I'll give you a bit of a backstory to the uh, copper, all of these rounds, what was that, maple leaf, uh, freedom girl, well you can probably see them all there, the flying eagle, um, all of these rounds were actually either gifted to me or as part of a trade and they obviously you know you can buy them from this small quarter ounce one up to uh, obviously bigger bars than the kilo now this kilo oh blimey I bought uh, about a decade ago so 2023 maybe I can't remember exactly now I bought it because of all the hype over copper, you know, saying that copper was going to go to the moon, you know, it was needed for all electronics and blah, blah, blah. And I thought, all right, I'll grab myself a copper kilo. <laughs> but in all honesty, you know, it, I don't think it really has, you know, I don't think it's, uh, I certainly don't think it's kept up with inflation. And, um, I, you know, I don't think... Uh, that was a particularly good buy for me. Uh, silver, on the other hand, many of the pieces that I bought did go up. Um, even obviously, as you know, bullion piece, bullion price, spot price has gone up um, as well. Now, the similarity between these three is obviously they all do a fractional size like this, which is affordable. This little one gram prospector. <laughs> which is obviously very affordable and obviously uh, plain bullion like the Britannia to obviously the more um, higher premium pieces or in this case a very high premium piece and um, or a low premium like this mint sealed 80% uh, Canadian Voyager and obviously it goes up from you know the tiny little one gram up to obviously as you can see the 20 ounce Scotty there um, stackable Scottsdales there's a whole variation of sizes obviously you can buy kilo bars as well um, to obviously the slightly more numismatic pieces like this uh, Panama Balboa and likewise the gold um, you know so what I'm basically saying is all, all three of them are re are actually affordable um, because you know you can buy tiny pieces of silver if you if you haven't got the budget to afford even an 80 percent dollar <laughs> Canadian Voyager um, and likewise with gold you know you can buy one tenth Britannia um, which obviously isn't the cheapest piece of gold, but you can also get yourself fractional bars like this half gram of gold. Obviously, gold equally goes up to the same, uh, you know, you can buy one ounce coins and, and obviously um, bigger than one ounce <laughs> coins and bars. You can get yourself a kilo if you want, if you've got the wallet for it. <sighs> And obviously there's, uh, you know, more fractional pieces like this Swiss Helvetia and one-tenth Krugerrands or the uh, hard-to-find British um, gold standard quarter ounce. And obviously then there's uh, what was once circulating coinage. Um, again, quite affordable so there is um, you know there's a gold piece for every budget there's a silver piece for every budget and there's a copper piece for every budget now on to my thoughts as to what has served me best well I don't think copper has um, even though there was all the hype back then that copper was going to go to the moon there was hype that silver was going to go to the moon 
There wasn't too much hype on gold, if I remember rightly, 10 years ago. But, um, so, you know, my collectible silver has done very well. And obviously even the bullion pieces have gone up in value. Uh, the gold has as well, obviously. Um, so the point I'm getting to is the way I like to... I don't, you know, I don't have a problem stacking copper. But the way I like to do it is this way. Oh, Christ. <laughs> because... As I think I mentioned in another video, I had a discussion with my LCS owner and um, he basically has buckets of um, uh, copper coins that are no longer um, legal tender. You know, the old pennies, half pennies, ship pennies and all of those and he literally sends them off to melt. Now these, because they're currently legal tender, he can't send them off to melt, but he did tell me that he puts a few hundred in the bottom of the box, so they do go off to melt, but technically you're not supposed to, because it's still legal tender. So all of these have been separated out from the modern crap ones. These are all the... Um, copper based ones, I'm not sure what card, I can't remember exactly what percentage copper they are but it's quite a high percentage and um, and I think um, what I'd like to try doing uh, is actually melting them down myself and um, pour some pour some kilo bars or something with them myself but uh, you've just got to find the inclination and, uh, and obviously get the right torches and everything to uh, to be able to do that but I'm not sure how many kilos is in that tub but it's an awful lot so that's the way I like to stack my copper so it's basically not cost me that much um, yeah I think uh, if I remember rightly he did say what the copper content value was of one of these and it's it's obviously more than its face value which I think um, you guys are finding in the states as well the actual copper content is more than its face value and obviously I like to uh, these are things that you can't can't get for free <laughs> so, so I like to stack them and obviously likewise with the gold but anyway I hope you enjoyed seeing my uh, copper silver And of course, not forgetting, oh, let's go with the French Napoleon, the gold. And uh, let me know your thoughts on those metals down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye.